Ninth or something, ninth of May or okay. Sixth well, uh, of May. We're live on YouTube. Okay, we're ready to so rock. Have to be in the three weeks before or two weeks before then. Yeah. Okay, so <clears throat> maybe it's ninth. I'm looking at the wrong month. Bank holidays on the eighth, Monday the eighth. Yeah. So it'd have to be in the one, two, three weeks before. Okay. Are we ready to rock and roll? Yeah. Okay, let's get everybody in. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to week two of Teaching Live Grammar. Uh, there's still people uh, arriving at the last minute. I know uh, 11 o'clock is often the the, uh, the end of break time, but if you could get on uh, a couple of things, really. Uh, if you could get on a couple of minutes before 11, that would be helpful. And also, um, if you could rename your um zoom connection so we know who you are in terms of which school you're from that would also be helpful to us because we could then see uh who's here and who's not so i'm just going to check that i've allowed you to rename yourselves yeah you should be able to rename yourselves by clicking on your name in the zoom and then telling us um which which class you're from so anyway and enough of that uh really good to be back it was a really uh Great first week for teaching live grammar. Uh, lots of engagement, lots of people submitting their blog posts and so on and so forth. So we really enjoyed that. And uh, Pi, you're here. You're not late. No, but I'm moving sit <laughs> moving where I'm sitting. I'm uncomfortable. Um, but yeah, good to see everybody again. And uh, in a minute, we'll crack on uh, with a bit of grammar. Um, and we have started easily last week with the building blocks of sentences and the building blocks are of course nouns and verbs and then those funny little things we call modifiers um the adverbs which um add to the verb tell us more about the verb slightly change the verb and then the adjectives which as i said should really be add nouns because they tell us more about the nouns those are the basic building blocks of sentences and we're going to have a little bit of a go at some of the other things which in a way a little bit trickier i think prepositions are easy enough um, but the determiners and the pronouns, and we'll also have a mini look at apostrophes using a plural noun. How are you, David? I am very well, Pi. Thanks for asking. Yes, uh, we had a, a good, a great week of, well, my job, I upload most things in terms of look through the writing and uh, check if things okay and approve them. I'm really impressed with, with the blog posts that were written and the quality and the time people have taken on them. So, yeah, back to it now and uh, pushing things further and adding to that. Looking forward to it, Pi. OK, well, let's start off with uh, our initial game. Um, there is in the teacher's notes, I do suggest the idea of having a quiz each week before. And actually, it's ideally timed, isn't it? Because you could have a little quiz first thing Monday morning, just so that everybody can have five minutes writing about, in this instance, what do you know about prepositions, determiners, pronouns, apostrophe with a plural, and how are they used? And then, of course, if people concentrate in the session, take notes in the session, jot things down in your English jotter, then by after the session, you can revisit the quiz and we can see what we've learned, what we've picked up, how we've deepened our understanding. So um, we're going to start off with a, a nice little preposition um, game. You know that thing, Elf on the Shelf, um, David? Have you heard of that? Oh, have I heard of it? Yes. 
<laughs> Elf on the Shelf. Well, it, it quite amuses me. I mean, Elf is one of my favourite films for a start, but the Elf on the Shelf, that quite amuses me. But then my children, when they were very young, Elf on the Shelf wasn't known about, so we never played Elf on the Shelf. But a preposition, I mean, what, what is a preposition? The word gives it away, really, doesn't it? It's it's almost all prepositions are to do the, with the position of things. Are they above something, below something, beside something, inside, outside? So those, they are the words which position things. Um, uh, and whereabouts would you place your elf? Now, in the notes, I gave a list of the most common uh, prepositions. Um, things like above, against, behind, outside, all, all of those sorts of words. So let's have a go at doing this. We're going to bounce it backwards and forwards. Where would you place the elf? I would place the elf. I and mean, then, of course, you've got to use a preposition and then add some extra description on to make it special. I would place the elf. Um, I would place the elf underneath the ground in an enormous cavern. Um, do you want me to say the sentence introduced? I would, I would, place, I would the place the elf, and then you've got to come up with a different one using one or two different um, prepositions, because I used two. I had under the ground and in a cavern, so I had two. I would place the elf between the toilet and the toilet brush. See, very unpleasant. I'm not going near your elf. Well, the, the, elf, the elf I know is, is extremely unpleasant. <laughs> it's a very nasty elf. Yes. I would place the elf. Um, I would place the elf on top of Brighton Pier beside some seagulls. So I've got two in there on top of and beside. Okay. Uh, I would place the elf beneath, beneath the doormat of the house. Okay, I would place the elf behind the caretaker's shed where he keeps his um, brushes and brooms. I would place the elf over, over the top of the lounge door. I would place the elf beside um beside my teacher's um beside my teacher's car okay i'm going to, uh, one that means the same as what you use but a different one um i would place the elf next to the king oh right i would place the elf um outside um, I would place the elf outside Buckingham Palace, but inside a guard's pocket. So I've got two in there, outside and inside. Okay. Um, I would place the elf alongside, alongside the queue to see Beyonce. <laughs> I would place the elf. Oh, dear. <laughs> somebody's got excited. I would place the elf um, against. Uh, I would place the elf against the uh, inside the fridge against um, a pint of milk. Now, John, I think people have got the idea. We're just using prepositions that show the position of things and then extending the idea a little bit and playing around with it. But the game is you have to use prepositions. OK, so I've got four minutes on the clock. Um, so it's I would place the elf and then where you would place him or her, indeed, or it, um, whichever. Um, and four minutes on the clock in your pairs or in threes or however you're playing it in the classroom starting 
or just before one thing uh, teachers if any of you are having difficulty because i've seen one or two classes joining repeatedly this morning don't forget the youtube live stream so if you're having a problem with um zoom link I'll, there's always the youtube live stream of the session so four minutes on the clock i would place the elf starting now Okay, that's time up. So uh, we'll just go straight to the Teaching Live website. <coughs> go to Teaching Live website across the top, along to session, click on the 11 a.m. <laughs> Excuse me, grammar session. <laughs> and here's today's session.
yeah, as I said, teachers, don't forget the, the YouTube live stream button there if you're having difficulties connecting to Zoom. So we'll go uh, onto the second button, Padlet 1, click on the Padlet activity. Welcome to Padlet 1. OK, now that first activity was to give us a bit of a feel for the notion that some words allow us to position things uh, at the end of the room, above, below, underneath, beside. There are a couple of other things about prepositions we can say. We'll look at them later on. This one is about determiners. They're funny little words, um, really. They're pinpointers. They pinpoint, they go with nouns. They're a bit like a special form of adjective. And they pinpoint which one it is. So if you've got a word like dog, uh, is it a dog? Is it the dog? Is it this dog, that dog, any dog, um, no dogs, 20 dogs, every dog, most dogs? So these are sort of pinpointing little words. Now, all you, the, so the instruction here is you rewrite the sentences, and the only thing that you do is to change the determiners, all right, or put a determiner in. So if you look at the first one, I'll do the first one. So I could say this morning. If you look at my list, it could say this morning, that morning. I can't say those morning. What would I have to do to morning, John, if I was going to say those morning? You'd have to add an S, morning. Yes, those mornings. So the one thing that you can change is you might need to pluralise something. Those mornings. But I'm going to go for every morning. Every morning. A cat, the cat, this cat, that cat, every cat, many cats. I'm going to go for every morning, that cat, that one over there, not this cat, but that one. So they're determiners, they're pinpointers. I'm saying it's that cat every morning will scratch, not my leg, but your leg. So all you're going to do now is take the dolphins one. I've done the first one. Remember, it, you can change um, the noun um, from dolphins to dolphin but, um, or cat to cat, so you can do that. So we could say this dolphins, no, that doesn't work, That do those dolphins, those dolphins swim, these dolphins swim, some dolphins swim. Well, some dolphins swim, they all swim, don't they? You'd hope so. <laughs> yeah, so that would have to be all dolphins swim um, or something else. So it's up to you. So you're looking to change or to just you're so you're just going to write something dolphin swim and you're going to use a determiner. So we're not adding words in or extending sentences. We're focusing on the grammar to get a feel for the determiner, which determines which one it is. Or how many of them? So I think it's straightforward, John. Yep. So don't go bonkers and start rewriting sentences and adding loads of words in. You're just focusing on the determiners. You may need to slightly tweak the sentence. And don't again, don't forget your um, uh, name and school. And don't use uh, only. Put your first name, please. Uh, okay, Zach, you're, you can get away with that one. Every morning, loads of cats would scratch their owner's leg. So Beautiful dolphins swim five, across the blue six. water. That doesn't look right at all. So, you, yeah, uh, I like this cat, this hat, <laughs> this hat and that coat. Uh, so um, that's my sentence. Um, so yeah, just look at the gaps. So uh, on the on the text. So you just do it, you're just filling the gaps. And Michael um, from St. John's, we need a determiner. You put an adjective, you said beautiful dolphins. We're looking for a determiner. Some dolphins, most okay. dolphins, many dolphins, that dolphin, this dolphin. We're not, and you've used an adjective. They're a little bit like adjectives. So um, here, so Pi's given a useful list actually. This, that, those, these, some, many, any, 
no either either each every many much few little yeah. both or there's loads there so yeah so you could have 20 dolphins swim there are a number of dolphins um swim um uh, and so on and so forth yeah Cody and Caminus, all dolphins swim. Our dolphins swim. Those dolphins swim. Well done. You've got the right idea. That doesn't get you uh, just because we're doing a very, very simple sentence doesn't mean you don't forget your capital letter uh, and full stop. I'm looking at you, Alex at Forest. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, don't forget you can click on the three dots to. Um, so Ready. Serena and Mason, which cat sat on that mat? Uh, our dolphin. So our dolphin swim. Ten cats sat on our mat. Uh, so, yep, yeah, you can you can keep riffing off that idea for all morning, uh, Mason and uh, Eden. You could knit back and um, edit yours because you kick yourself when you read it. Those dolphins swim, but you missed off a full stop. So as it's grammar. Um, I think you should knit back. And, and look at Alice yours. from St. Edward's, the same. Yeah. Which cat sat on that mat? Spot on. It's just what we're doing is we're not using our imaginations particularly. We're just getting a feel for the nature of the determiner, which determines, it pinpoints, it's this one or that one or most dolphins or whatever. And most of us are spot on. And as John says, you've got to remember Ah, now, Zach at St. John's, their owner's leg, the leg of the owner. So an apostrophe needs to be involved. On the other hand, Michael, beautiful dolphins, you've got an apostrophe in there that isn't needed. And it's an adjective, not a uh, yeah. determiner. Which dolphin swim? Turning it into a question mark. Yeah, I like that, John. Yes. WPS. I'm not sure which school WPS is. <clears throat> Every morning my cat will scratch my leg. Yep, spot on, Beth. But but can you please knit back, Beth, at St John's and edit that because you've missed off something that you know uh, perfectly well. And Antoine from Rolvenden. Each morning many cats will scratch their legs. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yes. Look, so Logan is on to the burglar. Look at this burglar stealing these watches. You can change the meaning quite a lot by changing a determiner, John. Yes, indeed. Um, but it's but an actual fact the restriction uh, that you've placed on everybody actually um, <clears throat> makes it harder to be creative, but you can still be creative if you think about it. Right, okay, so I think we'll come out of the Padlet. So we'll click the back arrow, back to the session page. Um, so that was all about determiners, uh, the things that pinpoint that and those. There's a useful list there, this, that, those, these, some, many, number, etc., etc. Um, there, and if we go back to the session page. That's a bit uh, trickier now, John, we're on to pronouns. So we go on to the second Padlet activity. Yeah, now pronouns are interesting because um, they stand, well, again, determiners determine which one it is. Determine means decide which one it is. Is it this one, that one, those ones? Now, Pronouns stand instead of noun. So again, it's a bit like preposition. The clue is in the name. Pronoun instead of the noun. So we could say Boris is eating Boris's donut. But if we keep repeating Boris, it's going to be boring. It's going to sound weird. Boris is eating Boris's donut. Boris sits down at Boris's desk. Boris picks up Boris's pen. I mean, it sounds silly. So the pronoun, instead of Boris, we could have he. And instead of Boris's donut, we could say he is eating it, or you might want to say Boris is eating um, his donut. Um, so the nouns, uh, you've got your nouns, and then you've got the pronouns which stand instead of those nouns. 
So we've got the girl grabbed the burger and the girl ate the burger. It just sounds weird. So we could say she, the girl, grabbed the burger, it, and instead of the girl, she, and instead of the burger, it, she grabbed it and she ate it. Of course, if you keep doing pronouns all the time, you'll lose the sense of what's going on. So if you scroll down a bit, the game is to rewrite the sentences from this paragraph. So do it sentence at a time. But I want you to keep an eye on the whole of the paragraph. So um, Garth watched as the dragon landed with a thump. Garth stared at the dragon. The dragon breathed fire at Garth. Garth hid from the dragon. The dragon opened the dragon's mouth. Garth lifted Garth's sword. The dragon shook the dragon's head. Now, you're going to, I put in blue the nouns, and all you've got to do is bung in a pronoun. But if you keep too many program, pronouns, we might lose track of what's happening. So you may have to occasionally remind us that he is Garth and it's a dragon that he's dealing with. So that, I'll do the first one. Garth watched as the dragon landed with a thump. Now, that sounds to me as if, as it's the first sentence, John, I need to let the reader know it's Garth and a dragon. So I'm going to keep it as it is. Garth watched as the dragon landed with a thump. He stared at it. So instead of Garth, I've gone for he. And instead of the dragon, I've gone for it. So the next five sentences are up to you. And we're looking for pronouns but also thinking about, is the reader knowing what's going on or have we lost the meaning? So you've got that whole paragraph there, um, yeah. replacing nouns with pronouns as appropriate. That's the idea. So Vincent from Forest Academy, Garth hid from it. Yeah, that could be appropriate. Um, Garth lifted his sword rather than Garth lifted Garth's sword. Flynn from Ascot Heath. Um, yeah, um, if you're going to do a pronoun, you've got to go Garth, li uh, Garth lifted it. You can keep his sword if you want. Or he hid from it. And Henry, can you uh, just nip back and put that full stop in for me? Now do the sentences in the right order. So start with your first one. In fact, you could do the whole paragraph if you wanted to. Might yeah. make a... Makes it easier, actually. Yeah. Now, Arav from Walton on Hill, have a look at yours. You've written Boris eat his donut with no full stop. But we're trying to get rid of the nouns and put in pronouns. So it would be he ate it. A lot of people are repeating Garth. And of course, instead of Garth, you have he hid from it. He lifted his sword. Unless, of course, they're, they're wanting to remind the reader who he is. Yes, exactly. Is, that's the tricky bit. So, so, that's some, so, so if you do do the whole sentence in one go, you can make it, you can then uh, get an idea, the whole sentence, the whole paragraph, you get an idea of... Um, how it flows so Maggie Garth watched the dragon land with a thump would be he watched it land with a thud and Riley instead of the dragon opened its mouth you would have it opened its mouth yeah he didn't from St Wilfred's it shook its head Um, and Elijah, um, we're not replacing one noun with another noun. So he stared at the beast. He, he stared at the dragon. He stared at it. Um, or if there was more than one, he stared at them um, rather than changing the noun to a different noun. So Ralph from Rotherden, uh, <clears throat> Garth watched the dragon land with a thud then he hid okay so you've kept the the uh first sentence the same but changed the uh 
then rather than then Garth hid, then Heath hid, which is exa exactly what the job of a pronoun is to replace, to avoid the repetition of saying somebody's name or a noun repeatedly. So Theo from St. John's, we're trying to do pronouns. So instead of the amazing dragon breathe fire at Garth, it would it breathe fire at him. So it's not, we're not, it's a funny thing to say, but we're not looking for a creativity. We're trying to replace the nouns with pronouns in order to get a feel for the job of the pronoun. The job of the pronoun is to replace nouns. And the name Garth is a noun. So Isaac and Joshua, he hid from it spot on. Yeah, so I think is it pro um, is actually Latin, isn't it, Pi? It means instead of. I think so, yes. So pro, like a pro consul is a, a person standing in for the actual consul or a, um, a pronoun stands in for a noun. Yeah. Right, okay, so we'll uh, come out of the Padlet and we'll just uh, just look quickly at that paragraph again. So the idea here was that we replaced the nouns where appropriate with pronouns, words to stand in place of the noun. The dragon opened the dragon's mouth, the dragon opened its mouth. Garth lifted Garth's sword, Garth lifted his sword and so on. So, um, yeah, if you scroll back up, John, I'll try and do the whole thing. So um, Garth watched as the dragon landed with a thump. He stared at it. The dragon breathed fire at, fire at him. Garth hid from the dragon. It opened its mouth. Garth lifted his sword. The dragon shook its head. So, yeah, so it Something like that. it and makes it flow. Uh, makes your writing flow much better. So um, if we go back to the session page, and we'll have a look. Do you want to have a quick look at the uh, uh, PowerPoint, Pi? Yeah, let's have a quick look at that. So I'll just talk to this for a, a short while, and we'll get on the Jotcast. So the basics of sentences, we've had verbs and adverbs, nouns and adjectives. And we're thinking about the job that a word is doing in the sentence. That's what grammar is really about sentences and how they work and the job of different words. Prepositions, sort of easy, really. They come before the noun or the pronoun and they show the position of something or someone like above the palace, below the sea, inside the box, underneath the ground. Two other little things. They can show the direction we went towards the shop. So you can see towards is sort of like placing, but it's the direction that we're going. I mean, they could even show time or cause before lunch. The children were with their friends. So it's sort of a bit positioning that those two. Um, but just try and think about the function of it before lunch. It's positioning, if you like, when we did something or other. OK, if we move on, John, using prepositions, I've got you a nice juicy list of the most common ones there. And they're very good for describing, a bit like the elf on the shelf, settings and where things are. He stepped into the shop. On the ceiling hung several clocks. Against the counter stood an old umbrella. In the corner, there were two jars of sweets. Tucked between the bookcase was a stuffed owl. So we're taking the picture of the shop and then we're using our adjectives to say on the ceiling, against the counter, in a corner, between the bookcase on the floor, so they're great for when we're doing settings. Now, yeah. nouns and capital letters, nouns we know name things. You've got your common nouns for everyday stuff like cats and dogs and trees, and then proper nouns. Some proper nouns we use when we're talking about particular people like Garth, places like London, months and days of the week, and they have the proper nouns have to have a capital letter. It's a bit like showing a bit of respect to somebody. So James went to London on a Friday in July. You can see I've got capital letters there 
because they are all special and particular and they're proper nouns. So most of us know that. We learned that early on. This is the tricky bit with plurals and apostrophe. So we know nouns can be singular, can be one cat or lots of cats. Single means there's one, one like dog. Plural means there's one or more, like two dogs or three dogs or 30 dogs. Now, we all know that. Apostrophe for omission. So omission is when you miss some letters out. I can't work. And that apostrophe stands instead of some letters. I cannot work. So don't means do not. And that apostrophe is instead of some letters. Possession, like the girl's handbag, the handbag that belongs to the girl, or Pi's pen, that pen or Pi's computer, it belongs to me. So we would just have the girl's handbag, the handbag belonging to the girl. So it's one girl. So you have girls, you've got girl apostrophe S to show the possession. If there are lots of girls, the girls handbags, so there are 30 girls and 30 handbags, we're in a different situation. We've got lots of handbags belonging to lots of girls. So you take the word girls and you put the apostrophe after um, the plural. So that's just a little reminder. I'm sure you've been taught that, but as it can be a little bit of a tricky one. OK, if we go on to the determiners, these are a bit like an adjective and they determine which one that cat sat on this map. Also, you can determine how many or how much few humans can eat six shredded wheat. They're still determining the number um, or the uh, uh, how many or how much. So they determine, they pinpoint that boy, that boy there pinched those apples from these trees. Some determiners are possessive. A possession is something you own. And possess possessive means you own something, possession. It belongs to you. It's mine. My, my car, your car, his car, her car. They're called possessives. Possessive determiners. They determine who owns it. OK. And we use them. I've got a nice juicy list of, of some common ones. They're a special sort of adject adjective, and they tell the reader exactly what you're talking about. That dragon ate her burger. OK, on we go. Pronouns stand, stand instead of nouns. Boris is eating Boris's donut. Boris is eating his donut, or he is eating it. And then they're giving you a long list of them. And they're very useful, as John said, because they stop you repeating yourself all, all the time. Year ones do that. They will write. Mrs. Jenkins um, gave us, uh, and instead of saying Mrs. Jenkins gave us some handouts, they say Mrs. Jenkins gave Mrs. Uh, gave Mrs. Jenkins his handouts to us, and they sort of repeat things a lot. Okay, so if we go on, John, possessive pronouns. So these are the ones that tell us whose it is. Is it mine? Is it yours? Is it hers? Is it ours? The dog belongs to Joe. The dog is hers or even it is hers, and they're possessive. That means possession. I own it. It is mine, a bit like Gollum. Pronouns are useful, so you avoid repeating nouns, but you've got to make sure the reader still knows what you're talking about. Joe grabbed the burger and Joe ate the burger. After Joe had eaten the burger, Joe went outside. Joe grabbed the burger and ate it. After she'd eaten it, she went outside. So you're just sort of simplifying it and avoiding repeating the noun all the time, which does become tedious if we do it. So, so that's a little summary for us there, John. I think that's all, isn't it? Yep. Yes, indeed. So that's that's teachers, if you want to refer to that, it, that PowerPoint is on the uh, session page. So you can always go back and look at that and go through it again as many times as you need to. So the live writing jotcast. Ah, now, this is a game I love. And you've got to follow the instructions really careful. So if you scroll up a wee bit, John, we can see the whole thing. No, sorry, down a bit. I get my prepositions muddled. So <laughs> it's about writing sentences, but you've got to use the word class I've list. So you've got to start with the determiner. So let's go for this. Now an adjective. Let's go for huge. Now a noun. Elephant. Now a verb. So what's it doing? This huge elephant trumpeted. Now, an adverb, 
This huge elephant trumpeted amazingly. Now preposition, um, inside, pronoun, um, it's now a noun, palace. I put the elephant inside a palace, it owns a palace. So you're writing a sentence, but you've got to do it in that particular order. So that's quite a challenge, John. It's a form of sentence building. OK, um, have you put that on the page, Dave, on the Padlet, David, on the Jotcast? Uh, the Jotcast is beneath. Sorry, um, ignore me completely. So I'm going to go. I'll write one. Now, it's a bit tricky because you've got to follow the instructions. You've got to start with the determiner, John. Start with the determiner. Um, this. Now you need an adjective. Greasy. <laughs> now a noun. Chicken. Now a verb. Um, yep, you've got a verb now and an adverb. Slip. What's the greasy chicken doing? Slip. Slip. Adverb. Quickly. This greasy chicken swept, Slip. Quickly. slipped quickly. Now a preposition. Through. Through. Um, Pronoun and noun is it's uh coop that's where you keep chickens yes i'm quite pleased with that one this greasy chicken slipped quickly through its coop excellent absolutely <laughs> spot on so you're not allowed to bung in anything you've got to do it in that precise in order that precise order and it really makes you think about the types of words you're using this one. So a tricky one, I think, real challenge, and it might be a game for people to play later on as well, John, because it's, it is hard. Alice from Walton on the Hill. The fat monkey growled angrily in his stuff bag or stuffy bag. Yeah, spot on. Mark of Ascot Heath, the blue car drove gracefully on top of her house. <laughs> yep, spot on. And you've got your full stop in there, Mark. Well done. Uh, guest. So remember to put your name in. And guest, both guests, remember to use a full stop. That calico cat leapt gracefully over their fence. And those multicolored fish swam gracefully. You need a couple, you need your preposition. In the preposition uh, pronoun and mm. so <clears throat> the cunning fox crawled sneakily around the garden axat axat from uh, hallsville mrs hunter the blue car sped swiftly along the road well done the green giraffe ate noisily next to my car patrick from st wilfrid's I'm lucky Nancy from Rolvand and the tasty burger, burger landed perfectly in her mouth. Kayla, the white sheep ran quickly through the fields. Um, that sort of through um, is spelt slightly different, O-U-G-H, and field is I before E, but you're spot on with the word classes. Well done, Zach. The, the ginger cat meowed loudly inside his house. Uh, Toriana from St. John's. His grey bike sped up quickly past the house. Uh, grey, that's the American spelling of grey. And in England, we say G R. we spell it G-R-E-Y. Now, Archie from Forest Academy, I don't think you've got quite got the... Uh, word order no too many right. words in there you've got to follow the instructions because it's great it's what we're doing is grammar which isn't exactly creativity but look at trudy and lucy's got a fluffy the fluffy llama skipped happily along her land uh yeah um <clears throat> edward from hsp uh not sure which school is hsp that talented footballer glided rapidly through the state through his stadium. Yep. His blue ball uh, bounced quietly beneath his table. Christensen 
Chris, Chris and that Chris and Anton from 6E, or is it Chris Anton from 6E? Oh, we will never know. <laughs> <laughs> and Davoud and, and Kushal from Hallsville, those peculiar looking anacondas slithered ominously inside their lair. All right, I like that one a lot, boys. Yes, it's really well. You, you've chosen the words really carefully to create a good meaning. Yes. Um, so so um, your your um, adjective, uh, adjective there, peculiar looking. Uh, yeah, that works really well. <laughs> It's a bit like Ollie and Maggie. The blue parrot spoke obnoxiously next to its owner. <laughs> it's a great one. Uh, Ava from Walton on the Hill. The brown horse galloped gracefully by her stables. Uh, <clears throat> that ruby red apple glistened in the summer sun. Now, pie, yeah. summer, is that a pro proper noun or not? I, I'd say it wasn't, or is it? Um, so what, what are we talking about? We're talking about a season. Yes. Um, I, yeah. It's, it's one of those ones, isn't it? I would, I would never write summer, winter, autumn. No. <laughs> As a proper noun, I would say it was because it's non-specific. It could be any summer. Yes, they're, they're, they're common nouns. Yes, so summer is a common. So uh, Tilly, Sophie and Willow, there you go. Uh, the ruby red apple glistened in the summer sun, uh, like the sentence, that ruby red apple even, uh, but summer should not be a proper noun. <coughs> Thus, Pie Corbett spoke. That's what I'm saying. The famous, or the famous author wrote busily under his desk. <laughs> Eva from Winton. Six purple dinosaurs stomped loudly in my house. Yes, like that one. That's <laughs> very good. The white Lucia swan from swam. Lucia from or Lucia from Walton. Those grotesque beasts scrambled carelessly through the vandalized forest. Ah, added an extra adjective in there, so I'm not sure that exactly counts as following the pattern, but it's a very good sentence. Okay, the fluffy dog growled angrily at his cruel owner. Uh, cruel, uh, it's a difficult world word to spell, Max. Cruel is uh, C I U E L, cruel, cruel. If you think of cruel and Cruella de Vil, uh, the famous character from 101 Dalmatians, it might help you with the spelling of that one. That Taweed from Hallsville, that red chicken flew gracefully. So you've done the first part. Uh, I'm, I'm liking the notion of a chicken flying gracefully, <laughs> struggling imagine, in, in imagining it, but you haven't done the above uh, the preposition, the pronoun, the noun at the end. So see if you can extend that one, Taweed. Um, Marcel from HSP, don't forget your capital letters and full stops just because we're concentrating on one particular thing doesn't get you out of using your normal uh, punctuation. Yeah, we've got quite a lot without the full stops, haven't we? Mia, Owain, you, uh, yeah, no, you and Scott. Them. It's difficult because you're sort of concentrating on one thing, but the stuff that you, you know, the everyday stuff still has to, uh, has to follow. Uh, the, this large shark swam quickly below his prey. Uh, excellent. Well done, Bella from Forest. Um, Orla from Ascot Heath. Uh, six blue birds flew. You forgot your um, adverb. How did they fly? Yeah. Flew noisily above his bike. Um, chatterly. Um, flew um, a word desperately. Is Desperately. <laughs> um, the fox walked slyly on a civilian's front lawn. Um, so that's actually used, that's not using, um, you need to use a, prep a preposition there. The, the uh, fox walked slyly. 
<laughs> you on, you've got on. On, yeah, sorry. What you haven't used is a, a pronoun on his front lawn. So um, you've actually put in a, so kind of changed the meaning, but um, the bit of when I've walked angrily down his boulevard. <laughs> Yeah, the bitter owner. Yeah, very good. I think you might strengthen walked, Oliver. Instead of walked, you might have if it's angrily, what do you think? Stomped, stamped, stormed. Olivia and Lyra, you're almost there. I think you need a um flew over the an line. adverb in there. Yeah. Ah, look at Lucia's again. The powerful sun rays fired perpetually through my body. Ooh. Emma, have a look at, you've got their house. So that's a possessive there. So that's the one that is T-H-E-I-R. Don't forget your full stop, Tallulah. <laughs> and your capital letter, that yellow monkey stomped aggressively on the road. Very good. It's crunchy crisp crumbled suddenly in my hand. That's a, yeah, like really that well done, Sonny. That's that's a great bit of uh, illustration there. Um, yes, I thought. Well, you, could, a, no, you could uh, you could even extend that because uh, crumbled quickly um, because quickly, even though it's a Q, because alliteration is sound based, not spelling based. Yes. That crunchy crisp crumbled quickly. You can almost get you've almost got a full blown tongue twister there. Yeah, absolutely. Well done. <laughs> right, we need to come out of the uh, Jotcast. So if we go back to the session page and on to the blog challenge. So um, just before we do that, you'll see that on the right-hand side, there are um, three uh, Hallsville, uh, Ludham and St Edward's three tags there. I know there's a lot more of you have submitted grammar this week. So today I'll be going into the site and adding more tags to the, the, the grammar tags. So if you if you go, if you teach us particularly, if you want to look how um, your children have followed the task, if you click on any of the uh, tags or your school's tag, um, and you can go through and you can see um, what the, what the children have written. And if you click on any particular post, up will come so I can see, I'm looking at Bethany's from uh, Hallsville here. Um, and she's followed the instructions really well. Uh, as soon as Mr. Williams stood, stood into class, uh, rode into class uh, seven silently, the familiar room appeared to be gloomy and so on. Very good. And uh, if you want to, underneath, you can leave a comment. So teachers, uh, it would be great if you could leave a few comments on your children's work just to, to um, uh, give them a little bit of praise. We'll try and add a few ourselves as well. Um, it's, it's worth doing. We have a quality comments um, thing where you, where you uh, can say something positive, ask a question, uh, and suggest an improvement. In the case of grammar, um, if you, yeah, saying something positive and suggesting suggesting an improvement is probably the way to go with that. Um, now, what we did notice last week was quite a lot of people not following the instructions precisely. So writing a lot more than we actually asked. So uh, do try and follow the instructions carefully. So what is the blog challenge this week, Pi? OK, so um, I thought we'd do um, uh, one built around a little technique that if you've done teaching live before, we may have mentioned. And it's what I call the outside inside. So when we're writing stories, quite an effective technique that we can use to build up an atmosphere is to say what's happening outside a building or a place and what's happening inside and get a bit of a contrast. So we're using our friends, the prepositions, we're bunging them up front, outside, inside. So we've got outside, comma, the snow fell across the silent city. So it's silent, the city, it's snowing. 
and I've got to get a contrast with inside. So inside, I'm going to make it nice and cosy. Inside, a fire blazed and the hall was full of laughter. So it's horrid outside, but it's quite nice inside. I always think this is quite a good way to start a story. If we look at the next one, I've got outside the rain fell across the beach. Inside, the heat steamed up the cafe's window. And then we've got a misty one. Outside, comma, a grey mist wound its way through the streets, smothering the houses. Inside, the children warmed their hands over a thin candle flame. Now, the next couple, if you scroll down, are slightly different, um, John, because it's not outside, comma, it's outside the cave, comma, a dragon paced up and down. Inside, the hobbits huddled. Same with the next one. Outside the school, comma, darkness began to close in. Inside the year six classroom, comma, Mr. Godba lit the lanterns. So you can be slightly careful with it. You either do outside, inside, or you say outside, whatever it is, outside um, the cafe, comma, and then you say what's going on. And remember, you're trying to get a contrast going. I think if people look at mine, and then innovate on those patterns, they should be fine. But obviously you're going to want to change the mood, the atmosphere, the places, and what's happening. But use my sentence um, patterns and get those prepositions um, outside, inside, working well for us. So can, can children, if you, because you, outside and inside are kind of opposites. Yes. So could they use different opposite prepositions, Pi, such as, above and below yes so above the castle the dragon swooped below the castle the dwarves delved yeah so, well, far below the uh, the villagers um cowered in fear above and below would work uh, so inside outside above and below um inside, outside. on the right on the left on, on the, the right, right on, the left. on the left east and the right. west to the east to the west yeah, yeah. opposites Opposites uh, is what we're going for, John. Absolutely. Right. So prepositions that with opposite meanings design you. What you're doing here is yeah, creating atmosphere. Yes. Um, and we we've we've done this many times in teaching live in our creative writing sessions. Um, outside inside is is a, a, a classic technique because it it it's contrast. It's uh, yeah. yeah. Outside everything's horrible. Inside, everything's lovely and cosy. Outside, everything's sweltering. Inside, it's cool and sheltered. Whatever. Uh, we're looking for contrast, aren't we, Pi? Yeah, and in terms of the grammar, they outside and inside are quite obviously prepositions. But the tricky bit is, John, where are they coming in the sentence, John? At so the, they're coming at the front. So they are fronted? Adverbials. Which are telling they're fronted, us. They're fronted adjectives. Fronted adverbials, which are telling us where something happened. Yeah, yes, yes. That, that's the tricky thing. One of the tricky things about grammar is they are um, outside the cave is a prepositional phrase, but it is working as a fronted adverbial. And I know that quite simply because it's up the front with a comma after it. And anything like that is a fronted adverbial. So it's a prepositional phrase working as a fronted adverbial. How about that? <laughs> Suck on that and see where it gets you. <laughs> yeah, I, I, no, I, I'm not going to get too hung up on the language of this pie. I'm, I'm going to stick with a simple sort of, I like the... the, the it's a the positioning for a word or phrase, isn't it? Uh, use, yes. Um, uh, as it just, yeah, using prepositions to create contrast. Uh, I can understand that bit. Um, if I get further into the technicalities of the language, it does confuse and you can get really hung up on that. So I, I'm not going to, if that's OK with you, Pi. Yep. That'll right. Do so, uh, <laughs> yeah. So uh, five pairs of sentences. Uh, and try and use different ones. You know, you don't have to use outside and inside all the way through. Try doing uh, an outside and inside and above and below and east and the west. Um, if, if you like, um, keep an eye on the teaching live grammar tags, uh, because those will be multiplying today, uh, this afternoon as I get onto the site and, and add more tags as they've come in. 
and do try and leave some comments on the site if you can. And don't forget, of course, if you want to, you can refer back to the Padlet, uh, the Padlets and the um, uh, Jotcast, and you have the PowerPoint on the session page if you want to go through the session uh, again and just remind children what we were talking about. So that's it from Teaching Live Grammar this week. Uh, and next week, what are we doing next week, Pi? I'm trying to remember. We're getting on to phrases and clauses. Phrases right. are little groups of words. Um, so outside the cave is a little phrase. They're little groups of words that um, act as one unit. And then clauses are rather like sentences. They're the bit with the verb in. So we'll look at the difference between the, those two things next week. Most people will know something about these. So we just have another another go at them. And don't forget to do your quiz before and after. Um, yeah. Right. So uh, that's it for this week. And uh, off to lunch it we go. And we will see you next time for more uh, Teaching Live Grammar. Bye-bye. Well done, everyone. Bye. Bye-bye, everyone.